Hey guys, senior producer Chris McGraw here. We did something a little bit different for this week's podcast. We did a round table a couple weeks ago and we were testing out all of the midsize pickups for our midsize pickup truck comparison. This is the audio from that. We have Greg Migliori, Alex Kirstein, John Snyder, and Reese Counts talking about which trucks they liked, which trucks they didn't, how they fared on the road and off road. And at the end, we reveal which truck won our midsize pickup comparison test. So take a listen. Enjoy. Did it guys, mid-size truck comparison, it's done. We're off the road, we're off the trails. I had a ton of fun. Uh, I think we've well earned these, uh, these cold ones. Biggest surprise of the day, what do you guys think? John, what do you think? <sighs> Biggest surprise of the day for me was how much the Ranger sort of turned around on me. When I was driving it on the road, uh, I didn't like some things about it. Um, the suspension, the squat and dive, but getting it off road, yeah, it's a completely different beast. And it was actually like really good. I was I was really surprised about about that, frankly. Nice, nice. That's an interesting take. I think the Ranger is just it's a really compelling truck. It's it's one of the newer ones we have here that we're testing. And it was definitely one I was super fired up to to drive, actually. I wasn't just surprised by it though, but Reese, which one were you surprised by? Actually, the Colorado. Um, okay. I hadn't been on it. It'd been on the wheel for a while. Um, and I kind of forgot how good it is on the road. Like, it's got a really nice powertrain. Uh, the suspension and the steering are actually, like, surprisingly good. Um, Off-road, it was kind of so-so. Um, but, like, honestly, the chassis is really excellent. Um, and it, it surprised me more than, like, anything else. Like, I... I I guess I'd kind of forgotten how like composed that truck is. It's an older truck, so I think it's easy to kind of forget a lot of the, just how well balanced it is. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, you're a Tacoma owner. Mm -hmm. You've driven all these trucks. You know, you did a lot of the first drives. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I'll get to the thing that actually surprised me, but like, I mean, just in general, the thing that, that surprised me overall was how having them all back to back really changes what you think about each individual one. The thing that surprised me the most was I came into this, you know, I went to the Ranger launch. I really expected the Ranger just to, just to decimate. And when you drive all the trucks back to back, that powertrain, it's great on paper. It's a little flat. It's, it's not quite as good. I mean, I still think it's a really strong truck, but like you can't ignore how good the Colorado's powertrain is. Yeah. And boy, the Gladiator's powertrain really shines oh, yeah. compared yeah. to the, the Ranger. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was just surprising. I don't know if you guys all felt like that, but I mean, it was just surprising to me to see how having these other ones around changed, you know, what my perception was coming into it. That's a great point, too, I think, especially with, I don't think I thought the Ranger would decimate, but I love that term. That's a great way to put it. But I definitely thought it might be one of the favorites coming into this. Yeah. Um, you know, it's definitely a strong contender. But when I was driving it back here, like to this house, to like literally, we all walked in here like not that long ago. I was like, wow, that, uh, that powertrain's a little, it gives up something compared to the other ones. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So what was your actual biggest surprise? Uh, that, I mean, that was the oh, actual biggest surprise. The actual biggest surprise was that the Ranger powertrain uh, just really kind of fell on its face. Yeah, but but yeah. the broader surprise was uh, how much, how apparent that gotcha. was, like how, yeah, how, how, how different my feeling about all the trucks was having all the trucks together, gotcha. you know? That's cool. I think I'm going to echo Reese here. My biggest surprise was how good the Colorado still, still is. Yeah. It had been a while since I have driven one, and we've all been in press cars for a while, and the Colorado is definitely a press car you've been driving for quite some time. And when it came out, people were fired up. It's like, oh, the Chevy Colorado is back. It looked different. You know, this is, if you can rewind back to like 2014, 2015, there weren't that many things like this out there. And 
that for me was like, I'd say the biggest kind of revelation, biggest surprise. It was like, oh, wow, Colorado, still really good. I think I was trying to look back and remember the last time I drove a Colorado that wasn't a ZR2. And I think it's been a couple of years. Yeah. And I like the ZR2, and I know that, but I guess I just kind of forgot like how good like the standard one is. Um, this, like on road, it's super, super composed. I'm just super impressed by it. You know what I liked most about the day, and it's kind of like a simple thing whenever I do a drive, I really like the early morning. Like you get to the, whether it's the track or the trail or whatever you're doing, you get there um, and you see all the vehicles and you, like I was genuinely excited about what we were gonna drive today. I got there, I actually got up a little bit ahead of you guys to the trail and then like watching the four trucks like roll in, I mean, it was pretty awesome. It was like a modern day cavalry charge. So, I mean, I mean, that's as good as this job gets, you know, yeah. it's, it's pretty sweet. That was really cool. And yeah, for me, it was it, it, scouting the trails. Uh, you guys did an awesome job. Yeah, going, yeah, going, going out and, and, and finding the spots that we want to like hit again and again. Uh, that was really fun. And then like throughout the day, like just the, my confidence built with, with all of these different vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> we were tearing it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the end of the day, like, I it was, it was just really nice to have kind of to have the whole place to ourselves. Like, I'd not been to a off road park where we had like the that freedom. Like, you're always kind of looking over for somebody else and like worrying about like, I don't know, crashing or breaking something. But yeah, like I, we kind of grew more comfortable with the trucks and like, mm -hmm. how many times did we tackle that one hill trying to like? I think I think we did it four times before. Yeah, before we got us all out there to do it. Everyone <laughs> tried and failed. So let's see. You guys tried it four times. We all each tried it once. So that's 0 for 8, if I'm doing it right here. Yeah. yeah. That's, wow. That's It was a gnarly hill. And I mean, it was. It was. It was like that that kinky. Like it was, it was it, it, like when I was coming down the hill facing that one uh, and stopped and like Reese came up by me and I was like, this is, this is stupid. I feel I feel like we're making a mistake. So but, that thought went through my head too. I was like, it's like 4:30. Is this the time to really be doing this now that we're this tired? Let's take the steepest hill in the whole damn place and scale it. Totally worth it though. It was yeah. it was great. It was fun. It was when you're doing it, it's less scary than looking at it. I thought I was going to give up that thing. Like, but that kink you talk about. Yeah, that's the part where you get there, you think you're going to make it, and then I hit that little like the kink, you're right. And I just put it down. I'm like, I'm gonna make it or I'm not gonna make it. It's gonna happen. And I didn't make it because nobody the, made it. The thing is like the, the ground level on either side of you is window height almost, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. It's like a hobbit trail going up there. <laughs> I'm curious what made you guys think we actually could get up that thing. Well, it just seemed like a good idea, and it, why not? It, it just it, it seemed like something that would legitimately challenge trucks that we haven't done anything to. We didn't air them down. They're wearing stock tires, you know, like we didn't prepare the trail, you know, it just, it seemed like something that if one truck beat that hill, it would be amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there was no chance all the trucks were going to be able to do it. Yeah. So it was, it was a nice obstacle. It was nice to hit something that, you know, we go on these, we go on press trips and everything's very engineered. Yeah. So there's no obstacle that the truck that you're driving right. on a press trip can't get up because you know they've designed it to the trucks wouldn't exactly you have loved to see the reaction from the pr like folks from those departments <laughs> have them light up as we take their like pride joy trucks they're like all right guys see ya did you guys scout that do you think you can do it we don't know yeah. don't, <laughs> i don't know way to find it. I mean, that's why it's so great to you know do this ourselves to like yeah. really define how we want to test these trucks i just think that's really cool I think yeah, the reason totally. I wanted to keep doing it was honestly because we got so close. Yeah. Like the first couple times, I'm like, I think if we just keep doing it. I think we got further. Like, I feel like I was halfway through the kink in, uh, in the Colorado the first time. And I think we were, you know, we were just digging it out yeah. a little bit. I was, had, yeah. I, I was feeling good about it in the Tacoma. But then, yeah, you could, you could sort of feel where there was a... a a divot from from us driving up. Well, I was cheating. I had the lockers on in the Ranger, so that's not cheating. You know, <laughs> it had lockers. Might as well use them. I mean, Alex, I loved when like I was I was sitting back, sort of where we were staging, and you come flying around in I think it was the Colorado, just throwing up a rooster tail of, of sand and dirt. 
behind you and it was like getting in all the, like every window that was open in any of the cars it was like floating in <laughs> sorry no it, you're not you're not i know you're not sorry. i'm not sorry at all fun that was cool and so i started doing that too and it was it was a blast the hilarious thing about that truck is in the silt because it was real sandy up there it rotates so slowly it was like i was doing a slow motion donut you know you just crank it and wait and <laughs> yeah. it goes just it was awesome I got so dusty. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, interiors of all of them were, were, were the dust everywhere. I, I got home and like washed my hands and like the, the water turned brown. Yeah. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I was throwing water on my face just because long day, you're tired. Then I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I'm like a clay model or something. And I felt like my whole beard was just like filled with sand. Like it was pretty rough at the end of the day. Sorry guys. <laughs> Well, did you guys open the door on the Colorado? Like, the interior is black and gray, and it's just coated because with... Like a moron, I was doing donuts with, with the, windows the windows open. Down. Well, I was doing something similar with the the sunroof open in a couple of them. So, hey, it's, it happens, you know. It was fun. I, I think the best part about things like this is, like, the little moments that you don't script, and you're like, oh, hey, let's let Kirsten, Kirsten go shred some tires and do donuts and... Put up some rooster tails, and, and here we are. I like, there were a few hills in the back that were sandy that you just kind of had to yeah. charge up. That was super fun. Yeah, just gun it and, like, keep the steering pointed in the right direction. Oh, man, I love an off-road park. This was a good day, guys. Yeah. Good day. Cool. I mean, I've done plenty of track days, but I don't think I've ever, like, spent, like, a full day, like, at a relatively closed-off, like, off-road park like this. I mean, it was... I think we should do this again. What do you yeah, guys think? I think maybe we should do another off-road test. Get some yeah. SUVs. Get some SUVs. Mm -hmm. Here, here. So like I said earlier, the Colorado was my biggest surprise of this entire test. I just, I was a little stunned how much I liked it, how good it still is. John, shake down the Colorado. Uh, I was driving the, the Gladiator before the Colorado, and then I got in the Colorado, and I was just like, man, this is easy to drive, and I was... I was flying. It's it. so easy to yeah. drive. It's <laughs> and it it was just I felt super confident in it. Um, you know, it, it it was it was not quite as connected to the trail as the Gladiator, but um, it was better in that way than the other two, the the Ranger and the Tacoma. Um, didn't soak everything up quite as much, but that suspension is is really good. It just really good. It, it, it it's it's confidence inspiring, and I was <laughs> I was hauling around in it, and it was it was really good. I I was I was really surprised at just how effortlessly I could sort of crest over these little you know breakovers that were pretty gnarly and you know and i wasn't i wasn't um i wasn't hitting bottom in some of the other trucks i was hitting bottom in this one a little bit yeah uh but it's got all that stuff down there so you're good yeah. <laughs> um that's kind of i mean that's like i think a good way to sum up the colorado yeah. too and i mean reese you're a chevy guy historically we all have our different like things our family members have owned You've got to have some strong opinions on this. I wish GM design could catch up with chassis and powertrain because the chassis and the engine and transmission on the Colorado, I think are arguably like the best out of the four. That's a great way to sum it up. That's a really tight way to. But I think the interior, the exterior design is fine. I don't, I don't hate it. I think it looks good in different trims. It can I look really stuff. I like the look of the ZR2 with the cutout bumpers, but this one, the black, the midnight package looks cool, but that interior I think is just just round and gray and dull. It looks like a cruise in there. Yeah, it's it's bad, and it's it really brings the whole truck down, um, which is a shame because like I really dig the way it drives. Um, I had some problems off road, like with the front air dam and like the uh, side step scraping, but. That's okay. I yeah, scraped a bunch of the blade, or it, it's, the Colorado. It was well. nothing ever hung me up, and I was going over some pretty big crests with as are, were the rest of you guys. But yeah, I like that truck is so close to being great, and it just it's just not like not all there. Alex, I I, I mean I think Reese says it exactly right. Yeah, the chassis dynamics. And the, are great. 
The powertrain is second in this class of trucks. I mean, I think the Pentastar V6 and 8-speed is a little bit better, but mm -hmm. it has more dynamic bandwidth than any truck here, and yet the interior is just, I mean, it is atrocious. It's been atrocious from the beginning. I can't believe it hasn't, you know, like what is it? Silverado has been emer had like five emergency exterior redesigns. Yeah. They need to do some surgery like pronto on the interior of that truck. It's Fisher Price. It just, it looks like garbage. And it really brings the truck down. The seats I think are also awful. Yeah. They don't look good and they definitely aren't comfortable. Um, that truck with a better interior, like if it had a major refresh and they, Redid the interior, made it chunky and truck-like, uh, put in some better seats. I mean, there's so many things that truck does well. The steering's good. The steering's great. GM yeah. does great uh, power steering. So it's just, it's weird. I wish it wasn't so bifurcated, right? I wish it wasn't like, I love these things and I hate these things, because it's really hard to find that middle ground about what you actually think about the truck. But it's a real mixed bag. I think it's like, if I were to give this a, almost like a grade, like there's some like things in different in this segment that's like C or below, failing, not good. Certain things are A's. To me, the Colorado is like a solid just B. Like it can't quite get to the A level. It can't quite drop, like it's better than a C, but like some of its shortcomings really bother me. That interior is just, it's not what I want. And it's like, I think actually the layout is okay but the materials not where they need to be even for like a mid-sized truck or a truck where you sort of are willing to give up some things like you don't expect it to be you know an s class in there but it's it's still a little underwhelming but i mean suspension it's really good i think it was the best combination of on-road and off-road of anything we drove uh i did some really like crazy borderline stupid things in the colorado and totally fine and then when I was driving it up and down, you know, just the expressway, it was fine too. So I think that's, I mean, a lot of people, this is going to be the right truck for them, mm -hmm. but it seems like there's a couple things that it just it needs to do to improve to go from like good to great, which is a cliche. But when you've got like the chassis, the powertrain, that V6 is so good, you know, you just, you can't help but feel like you want more from it. Well, and that's the stuff that should be fixed can easily be yes. fixed. Yeah. The hard all stuff GM, is done. All GM needs to yeah. do is put some money into the interior. Yeah, it's a refresh away from yeah. being really, really it good. It doesn't need a new chassis generation. They could do they could do a Colorado 2.0 on the same exact chassis and powertrain, just with a little exterior styling tweak and spend some money on the interior, and it'd be great. And it'd I don't even worry changing. about the exterior. The exterior to me is fine. Yeah, like, don't, not. you know, if- It's a wash between it and the Ranger, right? I mean, sure. yeah, they're yeah. both kind of, eh, I right. think I liked it a little bit more than, than you guys did. I mean- Well, I really liked it too, but it was the things <laughs> I didn't like is what stressed me out. Right, there, there, was, there was nothing that was super offensive to me. It was just, um, you know, I, I, I went into it sort of expecting this sort of fit and finish problems that I've seen in a lot of GM uh, trucks and SUVs. And um, there was nothing there that really stood out to me as particularly bad. I mean, it was, that all, all, all things considered, it was pretty, pretty well-rounded. Um, yeah, I mean, sure, you could take it up a level, but. Good pretty well-rounded. I, <laughs> I think that's a good way, good place to leave it. So I guess we should probably talk about the one that by far has gotten like the most traffic on our site, and that's the Gladiator. Yeah. It's like a really talked about truck right now. Yeah. I mean, John, you must have been stoked to drive this. I was, and, and for the most part, um, you know what, I actually enjoyed driving it on the road better than I enjoyed driving the Wrangler. It's a little bit easier to drive, especially on the highway. Totally agree. I didn't have to fight the steering so much. Um, yes. It tracks straight and true down the highway. Um, Off-road, it was great. Um, I love, it, 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 it's the most different feeling of all of these. It's, it's, it's sort of its own truck compared to the rest of these. Um, when you're off-road, you can sort of see 10 feet in front of you. You can see the ground, you know, and you can see sort of the corners, you can see beside the tires. You know, the visibility is great. And that inspires a lot of confidence. Um, feels very connected through the suspension. Um, 
you feel every bit of the trail. It's 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 definitely the least comfortable, um, sort of all around, whether you're on road or off road. But off road, uh, I will take uh, you know a, a tactile feeling where I can know what's going on between. It tells me, you exactly yeah. what you need to do, like in what you need to do next, which yes. I think is critical. Yeah. And then uh, on the on the highway, it's it's loud. Um, but I don't care, you, you know? know? <laughs> I mean, that's a great way to put that, though. And that's how people, when they're, like, debating, like, a Wrangler versus something else, they're like, here's this compromise. I don't care. And it's yeah. funny because, Reese, you and I were talking about the steering, I think, in the, uh, the Gladiator, how you're like, oh, wait, this one actually tracks a little better than the Wrangler. I think a lot of it's the wheelbase. I mean, it's yes. you look at it from the profile, and that, it's long. It's a I mean, long, it's a really long, long truck. Wheelbase. Um, but it really like helps it on the highway and like it, it drives like, well, like I didn't like, I've never really liked the way Wranglers drove and like, I'm not a huge off-roader. So I was never willing to live with the compromises of a Wrangler for like the like pros of like the style. Um, but like since the JL came out and now the Gladiator, like I, I dig it. Like I really, really dig it. Um, and I think we can all agree it's the coolest of the four trucks here. I mean, it's got s more style than like the other three combined. It's pretty, it's pretty darn epic. cool. Yeah. It's like a Hollywood movie. Yeah, I mean, it's a Jeep. It, it's typical, typical Jeep. Yeah. But, but that's cool. Um, and it does like all the Jeep things, but like the interior is nice. Um, the interior is surprisingly good, I think. Uh, comfortable. It's a little cramped, but like not. I think the Tacoma is actually Tacoma a little worse. Yeah. If you um, want to hit your head and hurt your elbows. And you get all the cool Wrangler stuff. The top comes off, the doors come off, the windshield folds down. Like, No other truck does it. My biggest complaint is the price. It's expensive. You spent a lot of time in the Gladiator. Yeah, and I took a really long road trip from Sacramento to ended up in Denver, went through Moab in the Gladiator. And so I drove on a lot of like mountain roads with, a lot of like crosswind at high speeds. And I think it's, there's this duality, right, with, with the Gladiator where, first of all, you're compared to the Wrangler. And second of all, you, it's, it's a solid front axle like truck. There's a lot of compromise there. You have to make it do okay on road and, and really good off road. And, and so I think it takes more attention to keep in the lane on the freeway on a highway than any of the other trucks. It just requires, you, yeah. you know, you need to spend a little more mental energy keeping it moving. That being said, I think it does much better on road than I would have expected. And a lot of that I think is well based, but like it's more pleasant to drive on the freeway, even in the back seat. Like I spent a lot of time in the back seat on that long road trip and you know, I'm not huge, but you know, the back seat of a quad cab truck is not like a great place to spend time. A Wrangler quad cab truck? No, it was actually really good. So I think the Gladiator amazes me in that it has all this unique stuff that no other truck has, and it still drives yeah. surprisingly well. It's a really compelling truck, but we're going to have to talk more about the price. The I price mean, the is price is. Be, uh... But I mean, then you get more for the price, right? You, you get, get all this stuff it, that yeah. no other truck does. So we'll have to see how we feel about that. I can't wait to see what the scores finally are. This is yeah. kind of a surprise reveal at the end of the, uh, the show here. Uh, I just, for me, this was obviously, not obviously, but this was the truck I was probably the single most excited to drive. It was the Gladiator. This is what we've been talking about for how long? Like, I mean, long time. a long time. And I was like beyond psyched to drive it. I actually had it last weekend. So even before we came up, was really surprised just how good it was on the road doing like errands around town. The the powertrain is excellent. That Pentastar V6 I think is really good for just like you know around town cruising. Isn't That's the cool. transmission like really smooth? It's like it's 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 GM yeah, it's smooth. Right. It's, yeah. super good. it's like you, what I used to think GM transmissions are really good at. It's a really good powertrain. Really well calibrated. That eight speed is in like every rear drive like FCA product and it's great. Because it's a winner. Yeah. And it's it's, I mean, I was very, I would say for me, the Gladiator delivered. My only potential hang up is, is the price. Yeah. For me, this was the truck I was the second most excited to drive, and I was excited to drive all of these. But the Ranger, I mean, it's back. I know you have some really strong feelings on it. We'll get to it. It's just an awesome nameplate. 
But John, you kind of came to it with like a non-ideological approach. What did you think? I mean, I loved The Last Ranger many, many years ago. Um, I drove it. I drove it a lot of miles on the highway okay. and on regular city streets, and it was bumming me out, frankly. Like um, most, most of which was was the suspension super squishy. Like you, you brake, you're like. Like porpoising all over the place. Um, maybe I'm just really heavy in the front seat or something. But uh, but yeah, that was that was that was. I didn't like that, and um, everything felt pretty anesthetized on the road. Uh, I would agree with that too. I think it was sort of like there's like some extreme trucks in this whole spectrum, and I think we can all agree that like the Taco and the Gladiator are like. They're extreme. You're going to like them or probably hate them. And then you've got the Ford and the Chevy in the middle. They're a little more, I wouldn't say vanilla because they're not, but they're a little more like easier to digest. And I, I agree with you on that. It was just kind of like, oh, this is kind of okay. And then, I mean, Reese, you really take like a broad look at like the Ranger. So, yeah, as you mentioned earlier, I kind of grew up in a GM family. So I like, I, the Ranger was a thing. Um, I just... You just would never buy one. Yeah, right? like I never like knew anybody that had them. Like I drove one as a work truck. Um, this new one, it's good. Like, really and it, I think it's better than it needs to be. Like I think the name alone is going to help it, and this segment is like moving like product like nobody. That's why everybody's coming back with these trucks. Um, it's good and it's new. And it's kind of old because it's a global yeah, platform. It's actually pretty, but like yeah. it doesn't feel that old when you're behind the wheel. Um, it's not like the Tacoma feels really old. Right. I like, my biggest issue is the powertrain. Um, the engine I think is pretty good, but I had some weird transmission issues um, that really brought the whole thing down for me. Alex? Yeah, I, I have to, I mean, my biggest complaint with that truck is the powertrain. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. steering's okay, whatever. Uh, the, there's nothing wrong with the 2.3 standalone. The issue is, and I've had this happen in a few EcoBoost Mustangs where it just feels like, like the engine and the transmission aren't quite on the same page. There's right. some calibration issues. So basic, and also you've got a really aggressive throttle tip in and you've got kind of a weird brake feel on that truck. So I never felt super comfortable with those inputs or the shifts or anything. And it is definitely softer than the Colorado. If you drive back back with the Colorado, the Colorado feels more solid and stable on the road. So I really like the Ranger, it's probably the truck that I would buy. But like, when you when you actually have to objectively compare it to all the other trucks, I have to point out that it is, it's got some real hangups. What are you, what are you gonna say? You're... Oh no! You, when you were just talking about like the the braking and the accelerating it, 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 with the it, suspension, it, I was doing just yeah, so much of this. It's hard to make it smooth and. And, you know, when I went on the launch, it was a little different. I didn't feel this way about the truck and whether it was because I didn't have the context of the other trucks or whether there's some variance in how these trucks are calibrated truck to truck. Remember, I've had some 10-speed EcoBoost Mustangs not have weird transmission issues, and I've had some that have. Mm -hmm. It could be a truck to truck thing. This is a new transmission and new engine. Yeah. Newish engine recently paired to a fairly new transmission. I think they're working the bugs out. I did have a couple weird herky-jerky shifts when yeah, I was driving Me around. too. Yeah. It was, especially on off-road, not really many issues for me, but just like- It was great like, off-road. It was yeah. great off-road, almost surprisingly good off-road. Yeah. But then just on the road, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I need to like make this stoplight and it's doing all these weird things here. Like what's going on here? So the powertrain to me was the biggest, I would say surprising letdown too, because to me the narrative like when this thing came out was, no, no, it's okay. They're doing the four cylinder. You don't need the V6. The EcoBoost is good and the engine is fine. And I'll agree with that. I, th I think it is but, legitimately a V6 replacement, but the it, point that you're getting to is. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work well with its friend, you know, the <laughs> transmission. <laughs> they, they're not friends. They're, they're frenemies friends. is what they are. Um, you know what else though was cool about this one though is I think the Ranger had a lot of fun little just like ranger on the tailgate and like yeah. it had a lot of little like surprise and delight things that made it feel special though i think that was really cool i also think i don't know if you guys agree i thought it was the most comfortable truck For it's sure. the one i can spend the most time in. you right. don't think so you think gladiator is more comfortable no Chevy. tacoma tacoma is most comfortable for me 
Okay. Except, except, except for like the the seating position. Except for the fact you have to drive yes. it like this. Yeah, that's I mean, that, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. So the, I actually the think the Chevy was the most comfortable for me, followed by the Gladiator. Yeah, that one was probably yeah. I don't know. They're, they're wrong. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like tacos? So Tacoma now. That's a great segue. You think it's the most comfortable truck here? I'm curious why. Um, it strikes the best balance between uh, suspension and everything else. <laughs> so, so just to clarify, you're factoring in like total comfort as ride quality yeah, plus yeah, yeah. ergonomics. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's entirely reasonable. And, and you know, the, yes, yes, the the headspace is, is encroaching. I didn't have as big of a problem making my torso is just very small. But <laughs> do, do we have a sheet in the in the in the spreadsheet? Can we can we do torso measurement as a, like a bias? It's weighted actually. It's weighted. They have to multiply it. <laughs> Your torso in centimeters times four. I didn't have to think about how I felt while I was driving that because I just felt normal. You know, it, it, it soaks up everything really well and it doesn't do weird stuff through the suspension. Um, pretty easy to drive on the road. And, you know, off-road, it was also super, super comfortable. You know, I, I, <laughs> it was like, if I was, if I was going to put my wife in one of the cars who gets car sickness, I would put her in this and she would find the ergonomic. I know she would find the ergonomics good and I found the ergonomics. Good. The ergonomics are really solid in there and it lets you ergonomically. Except them. for this. Well, I like that. I like being in a submarine that is four-wheel sure. drive, yeah. and Reese, what would you put your wife and two dogs in? Would it be the Tacoma? No, it'd be the Gladiator, but the like, Gladiator? it'd be a Ridgeline. It would be the Ridgeline, actually. Ridge <laughs> um, Maybe the Frontier. <laughs> Chris is gonna kill me. I, <laughs> I, Rightfully so. I'm too, I'm too tall for this truck. My head hit the- like, Wait a minute, how is that possible? He's taller than you. I've got. Yeah, we don't have the torso measurements. Yeah. The final oh, torso yeah, measurements. Got torso. Gotcha. Okay. Long torso, like shorter legs. But yeah, I hit my head hit the top of the truck, yeah. and like that's like kind of unacceptable. It's hard to evaluate like the the rest of the package when you're when you're driving yeah, yeah. like that. It I was like only yeah. sl like very little, but like, and I think maybe without a sunroof like this one had, I probably would have been fine. But. Like, yeah. I still had to, like, if it was at a traffic light, I had to, like, kind of do this duck and look under the top of the windshield. Like, that's fine in a McLaren, but, like, when the other three trucks in the test, like, I don't have these visibility issues. That, and then the top of the hood takes up, like, 20% of the windscreen. Like, it's... Yeah. It's a really, really bad seating position. I like. I think John's got some rebuttal here, though. I didn't hit my head on anything in the Tacoma. I hit the side of my head super hard in the Ranger. When I, like, the, the, that, that pillar is like right here. It knew you were gonna rag on it, it was slapping you. Yeah, it was. Like, it was. I was I, like, I, you don't like me very much. I was like, I'm gonna have to drain this. I'm gonna get cauliflower ear. And like, I, I, I'm not joking. It was a, a, a actual concern of mine because when I was dragging around my head, bam. Do we, do we have a doctor? Do, does he need to get like a concussion it's protocol? Fine. And uh, I have one other quick note on the taco. The powertrain is garbage. Like, I wouldn't say it's garbage. I'd say it's like recyclables. You're still gonna put it at the curb, but it's, it's not, not what you want. <laughs> like it's that. not good. Alex, you're a former taco owner. I, I uh, still taco. still own a taco, and the near age point's like exactly Tacoma. the same. <laughs> What's that? I said you live somewhat near Tacoma, Washington. Yeah, yeah. I'm like 20 minutes away from Tacoma. Okay. Basically, I don't like the powertrain. This new powertrain's not good. The old four liter wasn't great, but the new three and a half sucks. Transmission sucks. They're not on the same page. Um, the seats in the major ergonomics, uh, the steering was a little small and thick, but the major ergonomics are fine. It's just a cramped. Uh, it's the same thing from like my dad had an 84 uh, Toyota pickup. Yeah. And when he, when I wrecked that and he bought the Tacoma, it's like. That sounds like a great story. The cab gets smaller because it's, it's like they keep the basic and then all the safety stuff encroaches. And I feel that way as every generation to come. It's like there's the same sort of volume and then they just, you know, there's more airbags. And so the inside just gets smaller and smaller. And this one just feels lousy inside. It's, it's really tight in there. It's cramped. And we're about the same size. I don't get how these two who are widely different sizes have different conclusions. 
but it's cramped. But I also yeah. like that. I would almost call it intimate in there, just because everything is, Ooh. you know, it's you can reach the like really bad infotainment system ergonomically well. Um, it's <laughs> Well, I, before he got in it, I put a white linen on right, the on the right. center console and a candle. It was very nice. intimate in there. There you go. Uh, Do you like the sense. interior design? That's like I'm okay with it. That. I don't hate it, but I feel like like it's very trucky. It's you know, chunky. You it's I, chunky. Is it cheap? Do you guys think it's cheesy? I think it's cheap. I don't it, think it's yeah. cheesy. I think it's piecemeal. It's like something here, something here, something here, something you, here. But one thing. Go ahead. I say one thing. I want to say here is you know. Powertrain, okay, not great, but okay. The exterior design still feels special to me, though. Like, when I walk up to it, I'm excited to drive the Tacoma. To me, that still captures that sort of, like, you know, beach truck, like, West Coast truck, almost like, it's another legit off-roader, you know? So, to me, that, there's something about the brand, like, cachet of the Tacoma that I still kind of like. The, the Tacoma, though, off-roading in it, you can't see anything that's a great point we went up a hill and i was like whoa wonder what's on the other side of this Just the hood is like yeah. up to here on yep. yeah. and going over some of those blind crests like when it's going to be hard to see anyway like you're halfway over and that hood is still blocking so much you know it's funny if you pop the hood it's like all that extra giant frontal area is just it's covering empty space it's just huge you could stand up inside the gap between where they push the grill out to and where the radiator actually starts all right, so uh, let's get to the part where now that we've had a few beers and other things, like subjectively, how would you rank these trucks? Like, what would you buy based on like what you just kind of want necessarily metrically, like your own like biases, just all sorts of things. Because when it comes to like buying stuff, most people just buy an iPhone because it's an iPhone. They don't go do all the reviews and homeworks. John? I'd buy the Gladiator, I'd buy the very base version. I would not throw in, like, anything. I wouldn't, I definitely would not throw in that $500 <laughs> hard top headliner. $500 for, for a headliner John, how much did that for cost? the hard top. $500. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, $500? It's stupid. It is stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a bunch of, I agree with you there's more. a bunch of other I stuff on there that, that is... But no, no. I, I would buy the I would buy the sport and put nothing on. Yeah. And that's why I would drive. I would, I would drive with the soft top and I would deal with the noise and I would love every second of it. Rapid fire, what's your next rank em? Colorado is my second. Okay. Um best all arounder, in my opinion. Um on road, off road, uh comfortable. Uh I think it still looks good. Um, yeah. Uh, the Ranger is just too squishy. I mean, I keep saying squishy, but everything about it, like, you don't, you don't feel anything unless there's something wrong with it. You don't feel the shift unless it's shifting funny. You don't feel, you don't notice the engine unless it sounds funny or, or does not what you want it to. I hear exactly what you're saying there. Cause it's like, it's like almost like lobotomized until it's intrusive. Then you're like, whoa, you know, and then the bottom two. Well, the, the Ranger is second from bottom. The, the Tacoma's, the Tacoma's, I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, I really like the way it looks. I just, it just, it just drives bigger than it is. And um, I can't abide by that. <laughs> what can you abide by, Reese? So, I think I would buy the Ranger. That's my number one. Though I think I enjoy driving the Gladiator more. As a truck and like thinking about this, like about what I would need and like what I would use it for. The Ranger is probably a better truck for me. The Gladiator's awesome and super cool and like my number two, but like it's it's the Ranger. And it just it's for me it's the most well rounded package. Like the bed's super usable. I'm really comfortable in the interior. Um the transmission and powertrain, like it's not the greatest, but it's not so offensive that it would turn me off from buying it. Um so that Ranger's number one, Gladiator two, Colorado three, like 
I like the Colorado and I like the ZR2, um, but like the standard one is just not charming enough to get past like the interior. I like, I really don't like the interior and it's, yeah. the seats are not good. And it's the base I4 is not what you're gonna wanna yeah. live with. I feel so, sorry for you, man. That's fine. We're still friends now. So by default, though, that's Tacoma in fourth place. Come on. If anybody's not putting the Tacoma last. Alex, where do you rank him? It's so weird because, you know, a few years ago, Tacoma was yeah. totally ruled the roost. Yeah. And I think it's just not aging well, and it has competition, like real competition for once. So my ranking, I went in as thinking it'd be Ranger, Gladiator, Colorado, Tacoma. And the Ranger's really uneven powertrain performance has flipped it. So I actually think... My favorite truck here is the Gladiator. It does, it's so unique. It's such an interesting experience and it's got the strongest powertrain. It's got legit off-road cred. I could do everything I want to do in that truck. And also my wife would love, the fact that the top comes off, the doors come off, the window fold, windshield folds down. It's just, it's just a really neat truck. Um, the, the Ranger, you know, if they if they release an update, if it gets ref we're gonna have to keep an eye on this truck because yeah, if they if they yeah. fix it, it's a totally different ball game. I love the Ranger, but I I just can't ignore the like really. You drive it every day. It's like the, all that jerkiness. It would drive me crazy. Yeah, absolutely. The Colorado that we have here, even though it on paper is a spec we would have, it didn't impress in all enough ways. And um, maybe spec differently, maybe with the diesel, it'd be stronger. And the Tacoma, the Tacoma just basically needs an emergency refresh. They, they just need to rework that truck. It, the, the, it needs to go through another generation, and it may be awesome. So hopefully they're listening. Um, it needs to get rid of that they're three listening. and a half. I, oh, yeah, that's true. Sure they're they're listening. listening, yeah. But they're listening. Um, it's just, it just doesn't stand up. It's still a sales monster, but... Yeah, it just doesn't work. It's a great truck for me. It's it's unfortunately it's the fourth place one pretty easily. Uh, first place for me is also fairly simple. It's just the Gladiator to me felt like the most special. It had a really good powertrain. That the more I drove some of the other trucks, I actually appreciated that Pentastar uh, eight-speed combination. Really solid. All the different things you could do with it how it looks it's it really is a rock star vehicle which in our business you don't have many of those i mean we drive a lot of cool vehicles and even some of the cool ones people don't notice but like when people come up to you at kroger and they're like hey what's that you know that means something yeah so when's the last cool. time that happened with a mid-sized truck that someone walked up was like right. what is that exactly yeah and then in between, I would go Ranger second and then Colorado third, but I could easily flip flop them just because yeah. I like for me, the Ranger is just, it's a little newer. I kind of like that. I mean, it newer is actually kind of questionable. The Colorado may actually be newer, but there was just a little bit more of a pizzazz fa factor with that. And then Colorado, very good truck. And I'm a little torn on that. I think the Colorado might be metrically objectively in my head better than the ranger if that makes sense but just for this purposes gladiator ranger colorado tacoma so this is the moment we've all been waiting for we've done a lot of work for this developing the score there's objective there's subjective components to it so there's our opinions but also where these vehicles like metrically rank so i'm really excited really proud of what we've done with this we scouted different off-road hills different like like marshes, places we should go, places it was probably better we didn't end up going. <laughs> but uh, it's the end of the day. The sun is uh, basically almost out. Last to first, let's hear them. So I've been sitting here knowing the scores and not being able to reveal them the entire time. <laughs> I'm dreading this moment. <laughs> I am so excited. In fourth place, no surprise to Tacoma. Um, I mean... Any reactions there? No. no I'm not surprised. No, I, I think, think it's where we all, and here's the funny thing is we all like the Tacoma. Yeah. It's fun to drive. I really like There's it. There's parts of it we all really like. There's parts of it that, that are best in, of the class we have right. here. It's yeah. just not Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. Now the other three are fairly close. Mm -hmm. As they should be. What was the point spread? Do you know offhand? Uh, I can tell you right now. So in fourth place, the Tacoma with 225 points. Okay. okay. Um, in third place, the Chevy Colorado 
with 239 points. Okay. In second place, Jeep Gladiator with 243 points. And in first, the Ranger with 244 Ooh. points. Hot Wait, lava. How Wait, how close was it? Gladiator? They were a point and a half off before landing. Wow. 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 I don't. Wow. Okay. And this is like, I mean, out of 200 something points, it's like damn close. Yes. Subjectively, um, the Gladiator was the winner. Subjectively, the Gladiator was the winner. That's interesting. interesting. Of course. Okay. But like you start comparing fuel economy. Price really hit it hard. Yeah. Uh, like bed size is really shallow compared to like the Ranger and the Colorado. Sure. You start doing all the objective stuff and yeah. that really put the Ranger like ahead. I have to ask you like guys a question. It. If you were in the market for mid-sized truck, and I'm not saying you have to buy one of these because they're the only options, but like, would you buy one of these trucks with your own money? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. This is, I love this Cause, segment. Because I like the Ranger, but I'm not sure I'd be willing to put my money on that truck just based on the what seemed to be development. Maybe in a year or two if they were, iron out the bugs, but like, it's not that. What, what's it going to be? I'd buy, I'd buy a base Gladiator. Yeah. And then, and then wait for my son to turn 16, and that would be his first car. And we would... He would have so much Do fun. weird things with it. So I'll say this, I think the system worked. I think in this yeah. case, we had objective and subjective, two components here. We definitely graded these things against each other and based on our knowledge of what's good in the industry and what matters to consumers. And I think even though it's close, I mean, we do have a clear winner. It was the Ranger. Yeah. And I think that's exciting. I'm glad that we put in like the work that we did. We did these like strong opinions. You know, we definitely argued it out. And I think the fact that it was close does speak to the fact that, like, this segment yeah. and this industry is so hyper competitive. It really is. You know, I, I was <clears throat> flip flopping all of these trucks in my mind in terms of what I thought was my favorite over the past couple of days. You know, just constant cycling. And, um, yeah, like, I, the, the Ranger, the Gladiator, and the Colorado were all super close. Super, super close. And the Tacoma wasn't far behind. Even uh, the numbers bear that up. Yeah, I yeah. mean, on the, like, 200-plus points, it wasn't, like, out of the ballpark. It was, it was in that range. Yeah, I could see it going, like, honestly, any, any way, any of those four directions. But, uh, but the Ranger won. So I guess we'll have to leave it there. The Ranger is our comparison champion uh, by a point and a half. But also, I think it's important to note that, you know, that is a significant point. We graded these on a number of scale, a number of categories, and like literally every part of this truck we analyzed. So, the well, Ranger hey, here's, wins. here's to the Ford Ranger. The Ranger. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.